Hi, in this video, we will look upon registration procedures for some special persons. Let us take casual taxable person and non resident taxable person at the first stage. Casual taxable person means that taxable person who has no fixed place of business and who occasionally undertakes business transactions in the taxable territory. So there is a separate registration procedure provisions uh, applicable to casual taxable persons. Then let us understand who is a non-resident taxable person. Non-resident taxable person means he has no fixed place in India and he is not a resident in India. He is, uh, his residence is outside India and he comes to India for doing business for a temporary period. So, there is a separate registration procedure for both casual taxable person and non-resident taxable person. Both casual taxable person and non-resident taxable person should register as per the GST law. And the validity of their registration certificate is only for 90 days and for getting such registration they should pay an advance tax amount advance tax in the sense it is an estimated tax liability that may happen for a period of 90 days normally a normal taxable person is not required to pay advance tax amount but both the casual taxable person and non-resident taxable person has to uh, deposit an amount equivalent to the estimated tax liability for the period for 90 days. And the proper department officer can extend the uh, validity period for further 90 days. That is, the initial registration period is only for 90 days and if after 90 days, again, if the casual taxable person or non-resident taxable person is willing to do business in India, they have to renew their registration certificate. In such a scenario, the department officer can again renew it for further 90 days and Again, the advance tax amount should be paid by the casual taxable person or the non-resident taxable person. Normally, in such a scenario where the registration is extended for further 90 days, it should not be more than 90 days. It is extended only for further 90 days only. Let us look upon government organizations or public sector undertakings that is PSUs. A unique identification number will be issued to the government organizations or public sector undertakings by the tax authorities. It is required only when they are making interstate purchases. If they are making outward supplies, they are not required to obtain registration as per the GST law. So, the unique identification number is required for government organizations or public sector undertakings only when they are making interstate purchases. Let us look upon UN bodies or embassies. For UN bodies and embassies also, a unique identification number will be issued by the tax authorities. Other than UN bodies or embassies, if there is any notified persons notified by the tax authorities under the GST law, for th those persons also, unique identification number will be issued in the GST common portal. The structure of the said ID will be uniform across India, that is either under the central government or state government. This unique identification number will be required for this uh, UN bodies or embassies for claiming refund of any taxes paid by them. It can also be used for any other purposes whichever 
required as per the GST law. Let us look upon persons supplying goods or services to such UN bodies or embassies. They have to mention this unique identification number of the particular uh, UN bodies or embassies in their invoices. And all such transactions will be regarded as business to business transactions. The invoices issued to the foreign uh, embassies or UN bodies should be uploaded by the taxable person in the GST common portal. What is the liability for transfer or success in the case of transfer of business? In such a scenario, the transfer or successor has to obtain fresh registration as per the GST law. They are liable to get fresh registration from the date of such transfer of business. There is an input service distributor as per the GST law. Input service distributor receives invoices from the suppliers and distribute the input tax credit to the supplier units of the same business organization. Each input service distributor has to take separate registration under the GST law. And for registering such an input service distributor, for any organization, there should be a separate office that is to be registered as input service distributor. There is also a provision for multiple input service distributor. In th that case, an organization can name more than one office as ISD or input service distributor. And separate registration is required for each input service distributor offices. Let us look upon job worker. Job worker is a person who undertakes any activity or process that is regarded with goods supplied by the principal person. As per the GST law, job worker is not required to compulsorily register for doing business. And goods can be transferred or supplied directly from the business place of the job worker. Only condition is that the job worker should be either registered as per the GST law or it can be declared as additional place of business by the principal taxable person. So, if the principal taxable person declares the job worker's business place as additional place of business, the job worker is not required to register as per the GST law. So, in this video, we have looked upon various special persons, that is casual taxable persons, non-resident taxable persons, government organization or PSUs, UN bodies or embassies, input service distributor or job worker. And I hope the points are clear to you. Thank you.